or mu2. So we're looking at mu1 greater than mu2. That's that's kind of the direction we're looking because children are greater than adults. Mu1 greater than than mu2 there. Okay. I like that. The null hypothesis is always an equality. So that would be out. Uh, this one's going the wrong direction. It's not saying different. So that's why that is the correct answer. Okay. Okay. okay to do part, to do the next question, question two, we need that table I just constructed there. And so the there's a formula for this. Which is kind of awful. Oh, I sent I sent you the formula sheet. Did you see that? Let me check here. Uh, you, you sent that by email just now. No, I sent it on um, when I uh, scheduled for the. Okay. Yeah. It's yeah. On, he, he, Let me go uh, grab uh, grab that. The That's formula nice. sheet. Finally. Excellent. Excellent. So with that, let me let me get that open. I'll try to snip in the formula because that could be could be useful. See your downloads. All right, there it is. We'll open that up. Okay, very good. Yeah, this is exactly what you need for this. So the uh, confidence interval, it looks kind of complicated, but it's not supposed to be. Um, we're looking at the one here on page two. It's the confidence interval for independent samples. Sigma one and sigma two are known, so you're using you're using this formula here, and it ends up that it's it's um, well you're not doing confidence intervals you're doing you're doing uh, just a two sample thing here, which I guess yours okay it's on the other side there. Sorry about that. Let me go grab that. You're just doing a t uh, z test on this. So here it is, it's on the right side there. So you you have sigma one and sigma two known. The reason you know that is it, it actually says sigma one and sigma two. That's how you know that you know it. So you're for sure doing a z-test and you're just putting these numbers in 2.8 minus 2.1 over the square root 0.5 squared over 10 plus 0.7 squared over 10. These are the values from this table on the right. Okay. Okay. So, uh, you know, some reasonableness, it's not T and it's not negative because 2.8 minus 2.1 is positive. So the, the answer is that it's, it's probably going to end up being this, this first one, but we should, uh, we should do the calculation just to make sure. Um, again, your calculator can do this for you. So it's like, it's like, I, you know, I'm. I don't know what to suggest at this point. We can do that separate session to where you where you work on these through the calculator. Okay. Um, for for today, I'm just gonna kind of do them by hand here. So the uh, the z value ends up being this two point five seven, and then the p value. So and here's your z two point five seven. It's the area in the tail, which ends up being if you you know do that that look up, which again can be done in the calculator. This point zero 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 five one. So your p-value, which is 0 0.0051, is less than your level of significance, your, your alpha. So if you look back, it says 0 0.01 or 1% as your alpha. You yeah. reject 8-0. All right, and that's what question three is, is, uh, is referring to. So in question three here, we're looking for the language that says, since our p-value is less than, so that means that uh, this one is okay, and this one is okay, okay? Yeah. Whenever you reject, you can say there, there is sufficient evidence. And you'll notice that's the only difference. Is yeah. is not sufficient evidence. So okay, there is sufficient evidence when you reject. Okay. Definitely. When you fail to reject, there is not sufficient evidence. 
That's the big you know difference I don't, between. I don't remember getting the stuff that we did last week. I couldn't find it. I looked for it. I don't know what happened. Uh, what, I'm, I'm not sure what you're referring to here. The, no. the email with the notes? Yeah, I don't. I didn't see it. Maybe I missed it or something. I don't know. Yeah, definitely send it on October 15th, right after the lesson. Uh, okay. Check your spam. can always resend it, I suppose, if needed, but typically right after. Okay. All right. So go ahead and get those down, and then we can move on to the next thing that you have for us today. Okay. I got that open, and I will share. That one has 14 questions, so. Okay. Not as bad as we thought. We'll get through what we can. When you're ready, go ahead and share your screen and. Okay. All right. If you could uh, kind of reframe your screen, I'm only seeing. There you go. Now it's good. Now it's good. All right. Let me grab these. All right. Could you scroll down to question one, please? All right, God, if you could go to question three. Uh, could you scroll down a little bit for question four? Wow, there's a lot of answers there. Okay, six this time. All right, we've got them. Okay, I got that. If you want to go to the next. Uh, kind of header thing for high fluoride toothpaste. Okay, cool. uh, I got. Let me grab question five real quick. Okay, if you could scroll down now for six. Thank you. All right, question seven, I'm ready for. So one of the one of the things I'm noticing here is that they're, and I assume your exam's gonna look like this, is they're, they're not necessarily synthesizing the calculations. They're, it's like, they're not, like they give you all the possible formulas here, like eight, for example, you're just, you Thank have you. to know wh which numbers go where. Could you scroll down just a little bit on eight to see if there's any more options? And we got them all. Okay, scroll scroll up just a tiny bit so I can grab that. Sorry, the other way, please. Other way. There we go. All right. Um, let me I, I can't quite see all if you could scroll down just to get grab everything from eight. Right there is good. Thank you. All right. Got it. Okay. Number nine. Okay, uh, 10, please. This one also is not time. I mean, there's a timer, but it's not a countdown timer. So you're in good shape there. Uh, let me grab 12 real quick. Okay, I got 12. All right, all right, I can grab the last two. All right, okay, got them all. I'll go ahead and share my screen and we'll uh, we'll get started. Oops. I'm almost there. Okay. Uh, they're giving you um, the mean of a first group. They tell you that uh, there's also a second group, uh, but they're but they're what are called paired. 
um paired is is like when it's the same group kind of before and after and they say they made in this case it was like a first visit and a second visit to a store and then um they they calculate the standard deviation of the differences 0.4 like that so you're supposed to know that this is a paired t-test from that information the difference is the big one there um and then the next thing here is that you can see that it it um it talks about leads to worse visual activity. So that means that something yeah. got worse, which, which is this, 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 whatever they're talking about here. So, um, so you're, if it got worse, that's more negative in this example. That's what worse means. Okay. You can see that by the by the average there. So in this case, uh, you know, mu one goes with x one, mu two goes with with x two. So basically, it, make a table again or no? Uh, we don't need that for this one because it's it's a it's um it's paired. We're trying to figure out what the whether it's mu one minus mu two less than zero or mu one minus mu two is greater is greater than zero. And a quick way to determine that is to actually subtract the two. Is minus 0 0.04 minus a minus 0 0.06, is it positive or negative? And this ends up being 0 0.02, which is greater than zero. So that's our, that's our null hypothesis here. So in terms of question number one, I'm sorry, alternative hypothesis. In terms of question number one, we're looking for the one that says mu one minus mu two greater than zero. And that's this uh, third option here. Yeah. The other thing here is that it's never X bar, it's never X bar. So if for some reason we were to get this wrong, A would be the backup choice, but um, we can look at that if we need to. So, um, what kind of test is appropriate? I kind of already mentioned this. It's a, called a paired t-test. That's this last one here, paired t-test. Pairs, they call it pairs, not pairs, paired. Okay. And the reason is, again, there's a before and there's an after. Okay. So whenever I see that, then I know that it's a paired one, right? Yes, yes, yes. All right, so they're not actually asking you to do the calculation. It gives you the p value at the point at the five percent level of significance. So your p value is 0 0.0686, which is greater than 0 0.05. You fail to reject H zero because the p value is greater than alpha. When the p-value is less than alpha, that's when you reject. Here you fail to reject. Well, that's confusing. Okay. Which you know, I always I always thought was weird when I first learned this stuff, but that's the way they word it. So what is the difference between fail to reject and reject? I don't get it. Um, it's like saying you're not wrong. It's it's different than if you tell someone they're not wrong, you're not saying they're right. Oh my god. Okay. And that's the fail to reject? Or the other way around? Uh well, the, the correct language is either there's only two possibilities. These are both wrong. It's either they reject the null hypothesis or they fail to reject. If okay. the p value is bigger than alpha, you fail to reject. P value less than alpha, you reject. Oh, okay, okay. So all the other only, stuff yeah. except and all that criticize it doesn't even make yeah. sense. Okay. Okay. Uh, so now, uh, the question four has all these different formulas in it. Because this is a paired p-test confidence interval, you're supposed to know how to do that. It's actually a t-test confidence interval. And when I say should, I just mean like the, there's this like expectation that you learn that at some point in the course. Um, I'm looking forward to see if you have the actual equation p here um yeah you got it here okay 
this is not a very good equation sheet. It's not very specific for, for a student like learning it for the first time. So you're you're doing your this is your confidence interval. So it's mm -hmm. it's it's x bar plus or minus p c times s divided by the square root of n. So you're looking at the formulas that have this have this like look to it. Right. So second one. Like, that one's out, that one's out, right? Could be the first or the second. Okay. Okay. So the the difference here is uh, the numbers in front. You can see those are the all the differences between them. So to find, because you know it's a T, you have to know the degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom is N minus one. Yours is 37 minus one or 36. So you'd have to go to your calculator to find a T value. And let's see here, what does it say? 5%. So that means it's 0 0.05 divided by 2, 0 0.025, comma the degrees of freedom, which is 36. You have to look this up in a, in a table or use software to find it. So that's where it's like, uh, if you had the you know calculator or you had a table, happy to show you how to how to do that. This becomes 2.029. So they rounded it's that second one there. Okay. Mm, goodness gracious. I'm getting nervous about this. Well, if it's not proctored, I'm happy to help. I mean, if, if, if you can find a way, you know, if you need some help, I, that that's fine. Uh, just, um, you know, they're going to look, they, they, they generally grab questions from your your assignments too. They don't usually come up with whole, totally new ones. Okay, any questions on that before we, uh, before we move no. on? All right, so here we go. The next question is, High fluoride toothpaste. Great. Okay, they they kind of already built the table for you. And X bar standard deviation. Notice it's S, not sigma. So this is for the sample. This is for the population. This S means a T, population usually means a Z. Now we're looking for language in the last sentence that helps us to decide what the alternative hypothesis is. And the key word here is difference. Difference means not equal to. So when you look at the choices, you're looking for the one, that's not right. Not equal to, two and yeah. three. Yeah, yeah, uh, for the alternative. The this, this always tells you the direction of the alternative, the second one. Okay. So it's either, it's either um, the first one or the last one. Because it's two samples, it's going to be a mu t equals mu c, not a not equal to a single value. This is for a two sample test. Okay. Any questions out from one to six? No, no. Okay. Now the uh, the formula sheet again is somewhat useful. They're telling you how to do the t test for this. I'm going to snip that in. This is on page two. Everything we've been doing today is on page two. So you can see it's got this form. It's got x bar one minus x bar two, s1 squared over n1, s2 squared over n2, and they tell you the degrees of freedom. And you'll notice in your problem that only two of them, only two of them sort of match this. So the, the difference between these is the bottom here and the degrees of freedom. It's, it's, and it says right here, the degrees of freedom is the smaller or the minimum. You can think of the minimum of that. Mm -hmm. And you've got to use both standard deviations. This one only uses one. So that's why it's the correct value. Any questions on that? No. 
All right, we do need we do need to calculate that value for the next problem. So I'm going to do that now. All right, so it ends up being minus 2.849. So for the next problem, it asks you about the p-value. So the p-value is the area in that tail, minus 2.849. But because it's a two-sided test, and we know it's a two-sided test because of the null hypothesis not equal to is two-sided, we have to double that value of the area in the tail because it's it's both the left and the right. So to do this, you would use software or a table to look it up. And I'm doing that now in software. And degrees of freedom is 36. Double it. You end up getting the areas. E value ends up being 0 0.0072. And you can see that that is here. Here it's a little challenging to figure out where it is, <clears throat> but it's pretty small. So yeah. that you know that extra lesson or what if you're whatever you're thinking about with doing, we could definitely work on that. Um, generally, it's pretty small. So if you're going to guess, if, you know the smaller ones would be the better choices in general. And it wouldn't be the third one, right? No, no, it's. Um, it's zero zero seven. So the like one way to do it is to like kind of line up the decimals here, point zero one zero and point zero two zero. You can see that it's it's smaller than the point zero one. So that you can subtract to you you basically subtract until you get a, a positive number. But um, all right, let's uh let's look at the next one here. So this one's more like number six. It's got to have the, the right formula uh, look to it. So the, the right look is uh, these two right here. This matches up with the fact that you've got something squared over, over n, something squared over n. Okay. And then the only difference is this number in front, which is the, the, um, Critical value. So it's p point zero one divided by two. That's point zero zero five comma the degrees of freedom, which is sixty three. Actually, I may have messed up that previous one. Let me double check that calculation because I think I used the wrong degrees of freedom, and I did. That does affect the answer. All right. Uh, it doesn't actually doesn't affect your answer. Okay. So this critical value here is 0 0.005. All right, so 2.660, that's this first one here. So we're on to a new question. So if you didn't like that one, you get a chance here to look at something different here. Um, question nine. All right, women's heights. All right. I don't like this section. <laughs> okay. Uh, women's heights have a population mean of 162.1 and a population average of 7.27. Um, Those random sample of 49 women were selected. What is the mean? and standard deviation of the sample mean. So the, there's kind of this thing I've decided, which is that mu is always mu, or mu, mu is always the, the, yeah, mu is always mu or the average, but sigma is really sigma divided by the square root of n. So in, in your problem here, it's 7.27 divided by the square root of 49. So that's that. that means this one's out. This one has the wrong thing there, so that one's also out. And were there just the three options? 
Yes. Okay, so that third one is is correct. Okay, this has got the right look. Mu is really mu. Sigma is really sigma divided by the square root of n. Okay, question 10 here is related to that. It wants the probability that the height is between 160 and 164 centimeters. So there's actually two Zs that you have to calculate. And if you recall, Z is X bar minus mu over sigma divided by square root of N. So the first one is for this 160. 160 minus 162.1, that's your mu over 7.27 divided by the square root of 49. That's your Z1. Then you do the same thing for 164. And your, your calculator will actually do this you know, much, much, quick, much quicker than we can do it by hand. Mm -hmm. But this is the general approach here. All right, so if you're doing this by in the calculator, make sure you put parentheses, top and bottom. We'll get these two values. All right, so this first one is minus 2.02. 2. Second one is 1.83. So we're trying to find the area between these two z values. Minus one minus 2.02 2 and 1.83. So again, you would just go to your calculator or your software or table to look that up. And the calculator will do this pretty directly. This would be a good one to redo uh, at another time when you are ready for that. Um, all right, so I get, I get there's, that's pretty large. The p-value ends up being 0.9447, which is really large. Um, so would that so that's, that's more than 75%. Any questions, thoughts on that? No. I just have to look over it and digest it. Yeah, so the only difference now between the next one is that it says uh, randomly selected woman. So that's n equals 1. So it's the same calculations we just did, except that instead of 49, it's 1, which does change. It will change the numbers. But it's it's the n value is just is just one this time so, uh, which changes these numbers on the right also. So just re in your calculator you'll what you'll do is you'll go back and recalculate one value and and then you'll have it. Now here we gotta do I gotta do a little bit more of an adjustment. But this is a uh, point two six. This is minus 0.29. And then just finding the area between those, just like we did in the previous promises. So it's it graphically, you know, there's zero. It's it's these are a little tighter, 0.26 and minus. 0.29. So you see geometrically, there's just not as big an area. This p value is 0.2167. So in terms of your answer, it's right there. You know, so it changed quite a bit by just decreasing the uh, mm -hmm. the sample size. All right, number 12. All right, so how large of a sample size would you need to have a standard error you measure no larger than 0 0.5? This is another formula. Let me see if I can grab that. Where did it go? There it is. All right, so here it is. This 
the formula here. And it doesn't say it, but you always round up. You always round up. So these these are no reason these are not reasonable answers. You're always going to round up. Okay. Um it doesn't say what the percentage is. Do we get a huh, that's odd. So we have a problem here because they don't tell you what percentage you should be. So uh, um, how big is sigma? 14 squared, yeah. So the problem is we don't really know what Z is, but let's go with 1.96 times the 7.97 over 0.5 squared. And you'll end up getting, when you round up, you end up giving 212 like that. So you think it's the 211? Uh, it's always rounded oh. up. Oh, 12, I didn't see that one. Yeah. Always round it up. Ish. So. But it's a little bothersome because they don't tell you what the Z value is. They don't tell you what percentage. So this one we might have to come back to. Now, the next two are, they said just general questions. So this problem here, it says, when do you reject? It rejects when your p-value is less than alpha, okay? So 0 0.0064, which, and I'll, I'll write these as decimals, 0 0.05, 0 0.02, 0 0.01, 0 0.005. Which is, which, which is these are, which of these is this less than? It's, uh, it's less than the first one the second one and the third one. Okay. So an easier way to decide if something is less than is to divide it by the number. And if it's greater than one, it's less than. Okay. All right, and then uh, 14. Last question here for this one. Uh, if possible, get a negative p value. That is never possible. So that falls. P values are between zero and one. So you can't get one greater than one either. Okay, well, here we go. Oh, got them all. Right. Thank you. Um, I don't know how much time you have left, but about ten minutes if you need it. Okay. Well, I want to send you extra, so because you've been awesome with me, putting up with me. Yep. Um. Okay. So my next one is really bad because I did really I took the R thing and I did so bad on it. Okay. Um. Let me see if I can go back and get it. I just, I don't know. I just struggle with terms for whatever reason. I messed a lot on this one. <laughs> okay, so I don't know. I have to share, I guess. Okay. Oops. You see it? I am not currently seeing your screen now. Oh, sorry. Okay. All right, there we go. I missed like all but two. Okay. Yeah, so the uh the only way to do this is to um correctly is to use the the data set, but we can maybe do it with uh without it. So um, the answer to the first one is their question two there. It's either answer A or C, probably C because you're doing T tests. Um, do you remember what you chose for the first first time around? Um, you know what? I took screenshots, but let me see if I can find them. Oh, 
what was that question two? No, that's the confident one. Where that is out oh, there. Mm, I don't know that I don't like that one for whatever reason. We'd go with uh, the third option, the T, because it is a it is most likely a T test, and the P value would be relatively small. Um, in either case, we can we can do question three. Uh, you're going to reject. It's either A or B. And there is enough, which is the letter A, there is enough evidence that's that always goes with the reject in letter A, option A. All right. I am no longer seeing your screen, by the way. Oh, no. Oh, shoot. How do we go back? You just have to click on the share screen again and... Uh, I don't okay, hold on. I don't know what the hell happened. Okay. So now I'm seeing, yeah, so your your full window there, including some, some things on your desktop. So it was uh, the yep. one the good. the first yep. one. Yep. All right. So the uh not really a good way to do this one. Um do you remember which one you chose for number four previously? I don't. I'm, I'm going to have to go back and look. I'm going to go through everything before I turn it in to see which ones I chose because I can't remember. Yeah, if you could just scroll up to the, go to the, I'm sorry, the other direction, the top. Let me look at the numbers one more time. Keep going up all the way up. There's nothing there that's useful. Um, uh so it definitely does not include that we don't have any data all right yeah without looking at the data it's just a pure guess if you want to scroll down um wait i think i found something i think i found the actual quiz here we go question four so I have the actual, looks like I have the actual quiz here, the whole thing. So which number did you need? Uh, if you want to scroll down to question, the next one that's not answered there. Um, I was just wondering if you knew which one you had, uh, had tried before. I tend to think it's, uh, what are we doing? This one, did, do you know what you tried previously for number four? my stupid but i only took screenshots of the test without okay. taking you know the answers. yeah so the 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 without knowing i mean is the bad divided by that i guess i go with letter d it's either it's either b or d b or yeah one of those yep okay i'm gonna scroll down we need the data set to be able to just, all right so uh, here we're trying to figure out if I can the data set that would be the first question, right? What what? The data set would that be off of the first question or? Well, I don't. There's no. I mean, there's. I mean, even if you send it over, I don't have any time to help like with the R stuff. But we can we can oh. like hypothesize what we think it is here. Mm -hmm. Um, it looks like it just says. Again, I mean, it, it, we're, we're maybe missing something here, but it's it's either it's either the first one, the second, or the fourth. I tend to think it's the first one because if you if you look up a little bit, it says right there, if mean heart rate value between female and male is the same, that's that's a not equal to. So I would go with letter A if you're asking me on that. Hmm. All right, and then to do this, uh, really no way to know. Uh, it's it's either A, B, or D. Mm -hmm. Um, well, that's a pretty I big. It's. Ooh. I might have. Yeah. C. It's it's not it's not B. It's either A, C, or D. Sorry, I may have misspoke. Um. Uh. The degrees of freedom is important, so I'll, it's down to A or B. Um, let's go with B. B is the right B value. 
Bee or uh, sorry, dog. Yeah, fourth one. There you go. Yeah, that'd be the best. All right. Um, well, that's interesting. Um, that's consistent with what we said there. So we fail, we fail to reject. Yes, yeah, so we fail to, so it's it's uh, it's letter D. So when you fail to reject, the uh the zero should be included. I'm sorry, that fourth option, fourth option there. There you go. Okay. All right. Go through my stuff and see if I can find which ones I picked. All right. Is it okay if we stop here for today? Oh, yeah. Okay. Awesome. So here's my, here's my question. Sure. Um, are we still?